From its inception as a horror short from the twisted minds of two Melbourne film students to a franchise global sensation that has left its clear signature on the genre for eternity. Saw is most well known for its gritty feel, infamous traps and twisted storytelling. Oh, and yeah, also a little bit of gore. It wasn't originally set out to be the trademark of the gore porn genre by creators James Wan and Lee Whannell, but soon spiraled out of their control once it became a global hit. And now almost two decades and nine installments later, it brings us to Saw X. Let me start with a short prelude on my history with the Saw movies. I haven't seen any and I'm not that big of a fan. Huh? Whoa, 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 hey, hey, relax. Actually, that's an overstatement. I'm not a fan at all. Nothing against Saw, honestly, I just never got around to it. And the only reason I did go to see Saw X in theaters was because the creators made sure to mention persistently in the promotional material that not a lot of prior Saw knowledge was needed to enjoy it. And knowing only the main concept of Saw from its heavily parodied and mentioned presence in pop culture, I felt it was the right time for me to give in and join the party. Of course, me having severe rightful mistrust in the movie industry, I watched a 25 minute recap video on all the previous Saw films. And oh boy am I glad I did, because it helped tremendously with some of the character and timeline confusion. So Saw X takes place between Saw 1 and Saw 2, only weeks after the original apparently when John Kramer, Jigsaw, is in the midst of dealing with brain cancer. At his lowest point when he believes all hope is lost, a former member of his cancer support group lets him in on a risky, experimental, and non-FDA approved medical treatment situated in Mexico that works wonders. This piques John's interests. He proceeds to do some further research on the project and those involved in classic granddad fashion as he taps away with his single index finger on what looks like Windows Vista or 97, some old shit like that. After being convinced of its apparent legitimacy, John makes his way to sunny orange filtered Mexico. Like come on, when is Hollywood gonna treat its audiences with some respect? We fucking know it's Mexico when the character in the movie says, I, I'm headed to Mexico. But after all that, John ends up getting his heart played with by a cute Mexican girl and a tall Scandinavian broad in a complicated scam set up to steal from those most vulnerable. This deceit lights up a flame of passion in John's heart for teaching people a lesson in valuing life. So, for starters, this is a much more character-driven movie than I was expecting, as the plights of John Kramer come first rather than the classic Saw convoluted plot and twists, which come later of course. For lack of a better word, John is the primary protagonist, with Cecilia Peterson as the main antagonist. In saying that, this film is on the shoulders of Tobin Bell, and he does a great job carrying it. I was a little surprised with the acting at times, and no, not that it was god awful like most horror flicks, having watched The Nun 2 recently, but actually surprisingly evocative, giving us the full spectrum of John Kramer and really fleshing him out as a human being, showing us colors of sorrow, betrayal, rage, and even shades of care. He's historically not been given enough screen time, so let's see if this changes that. All that character stuff is great, but I don't go to watch a Saw movie to see an Oscar winning performance. I was there for the gore and the sadistic traps, and I was fairly satisfied. There were several throughout the movie, pretty well placed. One thing I did notice was that no matter how great the idea, setup, prop work of the trap may be, it all comes down to the actor trapped in it to really sell it. And across the board they were good except one that let me a bit down in that department. Ironically though, my favorite trap was the one that didn't even happen. It was but a John Kramer fever dream, or maybe even a wet dream. Yuck. There's a reason they use that one for all the posters and trailers. An interesting fact, it's the only trap ever designed to leave the person still alive. But taking his eyes isn't doing him any favors. As mentioned, this movie is chronologically third in the timeline. So he doesn't even have all that experience in the torture game. But when he decides to get his revenge, he sets up all those computers, machinery, kidnaps all those people, sources all the blood, mad quick. Lickety split, yeah. And on top of that, he does it in a random location in Mexico. How fucking long was he out there? So this movie's main goal, in my opinion, was to make the audience side with John Kramer, if not at least empathize with him. Having watched a couple of interviews, Tobin Bell takes real interest in enveloping himself in this character. He mentioned that he wholeheartedly believes in John Kramer's philosophy, as a character study of course, not literally. This movie spends a good chunk of time focused on John as a human being, where the audience sees him outside of being the jigsaw killer, doing things like using his engineering prowess to fix a little boy's broken bike. Oh. 
rather than rig a complex torture device. Or having him deliver passionate speeches about valuing life and condemning those who deceive people's hopes and so easily ruin lives. And then ultimately seeing how they fare when the tables are turned. Even though we've known he's had cancer this whole time, seeing him in the cancer support groups shows how alone he really is. Paints this character from a new, unique angle. He hasn't got any family or friends really. The conversations between John and Amanda, his future longtime accomplice, show such passion in their shared resolve. At some point, she's worried she won't live up to his legacy, saying something along the lines of, I can't do it without you. And him replying, yes, you can like some hopeful father encouraging his child to chase their dreams. She cares so deeply for him that it makes the audience also feel a little bit for this terrible man. It also kind of reminded me of one of those talks between superhero and sidekick. And that's not the only way they bring emotional levity to his character. Just as he acts as a sort of surrogate father type to Amanda, he also builds a connection with a little local boy he meets in Mexico, who has a part to play in all this, of course. This brings me to the part that really fails me in this movie. Spoiler warning for this, when the tables get seemingly turned on John and they use one of his traps against him, named the blood boarding, it had me almost on the edge of my seat to think what horrible game he's going to get put through to get a taste of his own medicine. But to my dismay, it was a whole lot of build up for a whole lot of nothing. Just a simple seesaw of waterboarding but with blood. No excruciating, torturous pain. No blood and bone filled imagery. Only some pathetic failing about and gargling. On the other hand, I can see why it had to be this way. The little kid I mentioned earlier is in this scene as the other side of the seesaw. Having been roped into all of this because for some obscure reason he decided to play a bit of football at midnight. What? And you can't really be showing a young child going through crippling torture. Even most horror fans won't like that. Maybe the hardcore ones. This provides yet another opportunity for the audience to get all aboard the jigsaw train as his noble sacrifice to save the innocent child makes him seem like such a hero. But fuck that guy. I can see what this movie was trying to do, but ain't no way I'm siding with that crazy motherfucker. A few little tidbits I found interesting though. You see him doodling the key behind the eye trap in his little sketchbook at some point. There's some cheeky foreshadowing with the janitor on what may happen to people who steal from the vulnerable, which I thought was quite quaint. It shows us more of Jigsaw's smarts in the engineering and math field, the way he finds the location of the fake hospital he was taken to, figuring it out using the relative position of a tower, doing some trigonometric calculations. Wow. That did bring up a potential plot hole for me. That would this man of such mathematical, engineering, architectural, and even medical knowledge, for lack of a better term, deranged genius, Nerd! fall for such a simple scam? Seeing all the farce medical equipment and surroundings, you would think that he would be a bit smarter but I'll chalk it up to sheer desperation being his judgment's downfall. I can respect that this movie tries something new and fresh for the franchise, having a lot more of John Kramer in the runtime. Overall, it was a decent time at the movies, and my opinion on this might mean close to nothing because in all honesty, I'm not the biggest horror fan and haven't seen any of the other Saw movies in their entirety, apart from the original. Basically what I'm saying is, sorry for wasting your time, but that's kind of your fault. Be a bit more careful next time what videos you click on, yeah? Regardless, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you like, subscribe, and as always, appreciate you watching.